Hello, I'm Jennifer Lunt. I'm Paul and Shirley Late Davis's daughter. I'm the third youngest. And I'm married to Dan Lunt. And we have three children, Emily, Caroline, and Miles. And I just had Miles seven weeks ago. So I will start with our questions. Right. I'm ready. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dad, what was the first TV or computer? What year did you have your first TV and computer? And what was your favorite TV show or software programs? I don't think we had software yeah. programs. Well, <laughs> now when you address that kind of question, you got to keep in mind now, uh, we didn't have a TV until the late 40s. And in those days in Phoenix, there was uh, just limited amount of uh, time that the TV would come on. So, uh, it, and there was only one station, if I recall right. But I do remember that what the, on Monday nights, the uh, boxing, that was, <laughs> for some reason, mm -hmm. boxing was very, uh, very popular in those days. Uh, and I, I know it was very, uh, uh, it, it was exciting. And a lot of the families would get together and then uh, would, uh, would uh, share in this uh, uh, TV experience. Um, as far as computers go, that didn't happen until, oh, till after college. So uh, we're trying to address the era where uh, before that, but uh, uh, that didn't come till a lot later, the computers. And uh, basically my favorite program was the, uh, was the excitement of the... Of the boxing. Of the boxing. Was there a certain uh, boxer that you followed or cheered yeah, for? Yeah, there, or there was, but I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember who it was, but there were some very popular uh, ones in that uh, era that uh, did very well. That must have been exciting to watch. Now yes. we have to do reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we'll go on with the next question. What was your favorite time with your siblings or other family members? Well, you know, the uh, um, in the uh, early uh, spring, when well, it would be really late spring, and summer, the, our favorite time was the Sunday picnics. That, you know, that was just, we looked forward to that. Mom would, uh, uh, you know, prepare uh, all the, the, after we'd come after church and everybody would pitch in, you know, get the, the favorite, uh, mom would get the, all the, the food ready and we would get some, some kind of, uh, uh, either slingshots or something that we could do out in the wilderness and uh, and go out and play and out you know then the other very favorite times were the Christmas and um, Easter uh, and it seemed to me in those days Easter was very uh, it was uh, it had a, it seemed to me a little stronger meaning than it did today and I'm, and I'm talking about the celebration mm -hmm the church celebration in addition to the family celebration. Uh, it seemed to me it was very stronger. And again, we would, uh, it was a change of season for us. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of springtime. Uh, and for in the northern climates, that came just about that time. So uh, that was, uh, we look forward to that. But it was a beautiful time yeah, we looked, we looked for We looked for Easter. And then when Christmas came, we knew that was, Winter was here, mm -hmm. so that, that was exciting. And uh, all the things that go with uh, Christmas, that was, uh, uh, as a family, that was very enjoyous. <clears throat> Do you recall Easter being a bigger celebration than Christmas, no. or about equal back no, then? No, no, Christmas was bigger. Okay. Christmas. But I was saying that in relationship to the way we celebrate no. Easter today. Here. I see. And was there a certain park that you went to or an area when you went for your picnics that was the same place or oh, did yes. you go to? No, it was a, we had a, a one location that we went to and we kind of, nobody else kind of knew about it. And it, 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 we were picking blueberries and we knew where the best, well, my parents knew where the best areas to pick. These are wild blueberries. You just picked them right off the right tree. Off, right off, they're a vine. They're very, they're close mm -hmm. to the ground. They're little shrubs, like little bushes, right next to the rocks and everything, you know, and there, there was no, you know, no, not a lot of vegetation around there. 
uh, because the uh, sulfur from the uh, mines, from the f refineries of the mine, the smelters, that sulfur uh, uh, kept a lot of vegetation from growing. Oh, it, really? Yeah, it kept it uh, for miles. Now it's different because they have raised the smokestacks considerably and they have scrubbers that take care of that all, take care of all of that, uh, really all of that poison. And when that sulfur came down, you felt it in your lungs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you, it, it was strong. So that's, that's the story there about... Uh, well, it's interesting about the blueberries because everyone knows how much you like blueberries. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and blueberry pie. And, I love, and blueberries are great. They're antioxidants. Well, now that so at least you know it. you've been eating yeah, healthy, healthy, you know. <laughs> okay, so we'll go on with the next question. Was there a significant illness or injury that scared or concerned you? Well, as a child, uh, you know, I, I didn't, that didn't bother me. But I knew that uh, there were, polio was very, very strong in those days. And, and a lot of the childhood diseases were very, well, there were no cures at that time. And you didn't have the vaccinations. They as started a child to come, or... those vaccinations started to come out later. Uh, and I'm sure there were some at that time. We took shots, you know, as uh, a lot of the kids do today but didn't have the uh, ability to, uh, to control them like they have today. Uh, and it wasn't uncommon, you know, there was, uh, our kids had uh, uh, polio uh, within our class. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of the childhood diseases that were, uh, you know, the measles that you get. And, uh, yeah, I'm thinking others. about the vaccinations now, the yeah. measles, mumps, and rubella. All of those like are MMR all that the kids yeah. get vaccinated for. Yeah, there was a lot of, they were quite concerned. You know? But you never had any, you never got really that ill oh, growing up, did yeah, you? I remember you I got, scared? I can't remember what I had, but all the, they had all the rooms that were dark, could be measles maybe. Oh, so you Small did have. pox, measles maybe. Did you have the chicken pox growing up? I, I'm sure, I, whatever was going around, mm -hmm. we got it. You got it. But it was something that you knew yes. you'd get out of. Yes. There was some light at the end of the tunnel. Right. <laughs> there were, yeah, they, they, were, they had, uh, didn't have preventive medicine, but they had, I guess, the cures for it when you get it. Okay. Well, I remember when we all got chicken pox, you just had to wait until they all went away. I don't think we, uh, there's nothing to do. To do. When it was contagious. Remember, we all got it. And, okay. Let's see. We'll go on to the next one. What things do you remember about your grandmother? Well, uh, uh, my, uh, I, I was st stating in an earlier, uh, in our, when we were doing a earlier family history, uh, Grandpa left a big influence on uh, all of us. Uh, she was, uh, uh, you know, like, we looked at her as uh, very respectful and uh, she, uh, in her older age, when I came along, now Grandma was a lot older. And do you know what I mean? She was didn't have the agility and the capacity she did with the my older brothers and sisters. So Grandma, uh, we, we had to give her care, and we went uh, quite often to uh, to uh, her. She had an apartment. Uncle Charlie had an apartment in the uh, uh, right next to the uh, Frontenac Hotel, and then there was on the front side of Durham there was a uh, the uh, uh, Michaud's uh, 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 pharmacy and the drugstore, and then uh, there was a barber shop. She was in the back part of that. Um, it looked like maybe a three-room or three-room apartment, uh, and we would go there to care for her. Uh, I remember uh, Uncle John and I would go down to the Chinese uh, restaurant and bring uh, food for her. And she liked Chinese food? It. Well, I, I, yeah, she enjoyed it. She liked it. How old sure, were you then? Uh, well, I was in about the sixth or seventh grade at that, that, that time, between five, six, and seven, and eight. Those are the, the span of time I remember going over to help Grandma. So after class, that was your after routine? After school, we would go there, help her, clean up, and do that. That was part of, uh, uh, and she would, for our treat, she would give us a bottle of Pepsi. 
<laughs> she kept it right behind the door, covered up. You each got your own? Yeah. You know, I can't remember that part, but I remember Pepsi. I remember we got that. I that was that, Yeah, that was uh, enjoyable. And she had a cane, and if we didn't listen, oh, she turned the cane around and grabbed us by the foot. She was a oh, and she tripped oh, you. Yeah. She was a very strong woman, and a big woman, big boned. Yeah. She was very, you know, and she had to be that way to survive. Remember, she came over to this country with uh, uh, her, uh, my father and my two uncles, and her husband had already died, so they had him, you know, they had to survive. So her strength probably was generated from that to, to get ahead. What was her full name? Uh, Melanie. Melanie, uh, Melanie was her first name. And uh, uh, her maiden name was Holmesy, and her married name was, well, they called her Davis, because that was the adopted name. Right. So that's the story there. Okay, let's see here. I'll jump over here. Was there a certain person that appealed to you because of certain characteristics or common interests, like talent, athletic skills? Is there someone that comes to mind? Well, uh, uh, you know, our school teachers, uh, and there was, uh, you know, the three, there was uh, Laron, Vachon, and Gravel, those are the two women teachers, and then there was a male teacher for the seventh and eighth grade. Uh, those were, they were, were influential to us. And then there at the church, there was Father uh, uh, Jupa and Brother uh, Rouleau. Uh, those, uh, we were very active in the church. And then also active in uh, uh, Boy Scouts. So, so these, Boy Scouts yeah, those, important. these, these yeah. people help frame our, you know, our growth, our maturity. Uh, they were, uh, you know, dedicated. All of them were dedicated people. And then on uh, the relative side, uh, my Uncle Sam and my Uncle Charlie were very uh, kind to us and a very good example of, uh, of uh, family. And, uh, and more important than all that is your mother and father. Right. Who would you say would be your role model figure growing up that you would look up to? Um, I think, you know, both, uh, I, I, you know, our, our, our all the relatives, uh, I found that uh, my uh, Uncle Charlie and Uncle Sam were, uh, they, I looked up to them quite a bit, you know, watched their life, their example of life, and uh, I think that, that played a very important role. Uh, you looked to them and said, the, yeah. I, I'd like to be like that when I... Yeah, right, there was... The, How you know, old were they when you were in well, grade school? Well, um, it's hard for me to... I would say they were in their 50s, 60s, maybe, 50s, 60s. And they both and were married with children? Oh, yes, yeah, that's and the uh, and because grandchildren. That we associated with their children quite a bit. I see. So that's, that, you know, that was, and also uh, we were close to uh, uh, Uncle Sam's children. Uh, Uncle uh, Charlie had uh, uh, two children. Uh, uh, Simon and uh, uh, Barbara, and Simon was older, so Barbara was our age, and then on Uncle Sam's side there was Bernadette and Joni. Mm -hmm. So for Paul and Pauline and I, you know, those that was you our grew up, very grew up close with them. them, you know, and also we had other other friends at school, but I think those were more uh, bonding and more closer than uh, the others, especially uh, the. Uncle Sam's uh, Bernadette and uh, Joni. So you're close with the kids, and, and yes. Sam and Charlie were role models because of how they lived their lives, right? And and what they what did they do for a living? Well, you know, we had other aunts and uncles uh, in the, in Sudbury, but I found them to be a more, uh, I, I think, um, more genuine towards their family. More that's that's the right word. They were, you know, this remember there was a struggle of life in those days, you're talking mm -hmm. about just right after the the Depression, depression yeah. the, the era that I remember, you know, right after the Depression and the beginning of the Second World War. So you've got to compound all of that together and try to imagine that that, that survival that, that 
you know, of trying to make everything work out, you know, to support your family and to take care of all the needs of, of the day. And we live it in a very uh, a difficult climate in addition to all of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that you want to keep that into perspective. That's how we, how we viewed our, our, our relatives and the people that we associated with, with this struggle. I would think during a time like that, your true colors come out. I mean, yeah. growing up in a time like for us today, I can't imagine how it would be back then. Yeah. <laughs> it's so you very, admired what you saw during Jennifer, those times. It's very difficult to put that perspective into the way we grew up. Yeah, I can't, very, I can't very imagine. Hard, you know, and I, I think it makes for good character. I, I, I think you, you uh, uh, I think a lot of things start to surface in, in one's uh, ability and, uh, and it forms them. It doesn't take long to start forming. You, you, you see that struggle, and you saw that char the characteristics that Sam and Charlie probably had follow on with their children as yeah, well. Yeah, right. Good. We'll go on to the next. Okay, that's an interesting one. It says. I wanted to be friends with this person or type of person, but couldn't. <laughs> I, I, I find that to be uh, kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, that's a tough one. I, I, I don't recall, I mean, for me to be a friend of someone that maybe, that you couldn't be, that, that I couldn't be friends with, uh, I, I don't, I, you have to go Let's to pass question. on that one. I don't I really don't like know. that, to tell you the truth, I'm, take that out. As the interviewer, I can admit You have that privilege. So cut it out. <laughs> okay, the next one says, this was a memorable birthday party or celebration with my friends. Uh, you know, I don't remember, it was the, uh, it was a birthday party uh, mother and dad put on and we had it at our house. And there's a, well, well I remember it so well because I, we have a picture of all the people that were invited uh, with a good part of it. And Pauline would have her, girlfriends mm -hmm. over and I, I would have my friends over so that made for a good I for a good think, good yeah. group and uh, I, I I remember that uh, because of the picture I see and it brings to memory that event we had uh, we were all on the uh, porch and I remember our porch is about maybe four to five feet higher because of the snow drift so you okay. have to so you have to raise the house up <laughs> Uh, so all, all on this step of this big, on the big porch, the steps that go up to the porch, all of us, all of the kids were sitting down there. And that, that's, the, I remember that through that, through that picture. That was one of our big events that when uh, Aunt Pauline and I would have birthdays, all of these kids would be invited and, uh, and we were all dressed nice. You could see by the picture. Was there a certain year of your birthday when you turned a certain age that you just you know, remember a I, snapshot I, of that not in your I don't memory. remember all of the, uh, having birthday parties all the time I did that wasn't uh, you know within the family you did those things mm -hmm. but for outside event it, 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 that was rare so usually the birthday parties were just family N normally or just family yes did you have a larger celebration for a certain like this well, I now the six, 16 is a big time well, but back then probably I, it, I, it was, it was what I remember the either the seventh or eighth grade. I okay. do remember that the, that high. era that junior high, what you call today. I would think it'd make for fun birthday parties having all the girls with Aunt Pauline, all the oh, boys yeah. with you, and everyone. And well, everyone by the way, that same thing happened now. In, in when we came to Phoenix in high school, we'd have a party at uh, 60 West Willetta, and then and Pauline would bring her friends over, and I'd bring mine. So that was, that was good. That was a good event. Okay, let's see. I'm proud to have helped this friend by. Is there a certain friend that you have in your memory that you helped them through some kind of event? Uh, I, can't, I can't recall of anything specific that way. So uh, you, you have to go to another one. Okay. We will go on to the next question then. And if you want to skip this, 
I'll question. just give you the question. If you feel it, uh, I don't know this one. This was a particularly dangerous or scary thing I did with my friends. Well, um, that might be a tough one. To I can't. <laughs> That's why I said some of these. I'm sure there are there are things that happened. You know, uh, that uh, uh, that that would f this fit the question. But I, in my mind right now, I, I it's okay. kind of like well, it's blanked out. This one kind of goes with the, that question, too. It says, if my parents had only known I did this forbidden thing with my friends. I, I, I don't know if you want this on tape, too. So we'll, well just, is uh, there, do you ever remember I, breaking the rules when you were oh, younger? Oh, I'm sure I was, a, sure. I, I, you know, I'm no exception. I'm sure there are <laughs> events the that I did that, yeah. The wings. I told, <laughs> I told the story before about uh, the birds, you know. Uh, there's certain bush uh, uh, developed burrs, and and that there were little like thistles on it, and I I threw this at at Nora's uh, <laughs> Nora's hair, and my mother made me sit down right next to her as she combed and took each one out, I say, and I that couldn't budge. Hard to take those out. I have those never forgotten work. it. You see how she, she, and I, she I, didn't forget it either. No, probably, no. I bet you could. No, tell I don't her think Nora remembers that. But I haven't forgotten. <laughs> so who made you take them out? <laughs> no, I sat there, watched my mother take them out of Aunt Oh, Nora's. she had to take them out. She had. Oh, she didn't make oh, you very, take them out. No, it was very difficult to pull out. Ooh, how oh, big were the birds? They're just oh, maybe the size of a dime, but the the little thistles that come out of it, oh, you know. Her hair strands wrapped around, some, probably. Oh yeah. Oh, very, very, very. Uh, well, did yeah. you get punished? Well, that was my punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as growing up, I'm sure I, I've, uh, I'm no exception. I have did a lot of things. Uh, oh, I remember once there was a, yeah, there was a, uh, you know how the, uh, the tar that they used to put on roofs, and they have these big kettles and burners that, uh, that would heat it up. And the tar comes in big chunks. Mm -hmm. It's like ice, uh, in a sense. You know, they they take an axe and they cut it, and they put it in this this kettle type that is boiling, and that's how they get boiling tar. And for and a, and a friend of mine, and I don't know who it was at the time, were at this. At least this is after the job was shut down in um, in the early evening, and we were there, I guess, trying to monkey around with the machine. Well, a day or two later. Uh, the uh, the school uh, the detective comes to the school and questions us, uh, questions me. Boy, and I was scared, oh, mm. scared stiff, you know. And uh, I didn't know they were, uh, the school knew about it, the issue. And the, the and my parents eventually found out about that. Uh, but I didn't do any damage as such. But I was there, and they saw me there, somebody, and they reported it. So to think in those days, a small thing like that became so big, mm -hmm. you know, compared to what is done today. Right. right. Do you follow? And that tells you that that's good. I mean, I'm glad the community is involved to let, let the police know that someone is touching somebody else's equipment or maybe damaging it. And you've got to be careful if that tar is still hot, you could be in trouble. It was more of concern for it, you. Yeah, it's a concern. And another thing, I, I saw the uh, uh, the uh, what the workers would do with the tar, and I should mention this, mention it to you. It's very interesting. The, uh, the when they have their lunch break, and they have their the raw potato, they put it in the tar while it's boiling, and it cooks the potato. And they take it right out. Couldn't like some of that well, seep through. <laughs> no, and wait, they cleaned it off, or what happened? No, no, it just they take it out. And they and, it, and the tar they they put it in the water, and the tar forms oh, a crust like, and it came and you off. Just peel it right off, like you know. And there was no aftertaste of the no, tar. No, maybe it added value to the potato. I don't I know. No, that is a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, that's a story. That incident, um, you know, made like in the classroom, made national news that a detective or policeman came over to question me in this. Friend. You were nervous oh, when was, you saw the detective, oh, and they said, "We want to talk to Paul Davis." Yeah. I bet there was a little. <laughs> yeah. So that 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 was a, a scary feeling, and uh, it uh, yeah, it left a mark on you. You know, you you know that. Uh, there's somebody's eyes watching right. you all the time. Yeah, really. <laughs> so you have to be good. 
You wish everyone felt like that, yeah. especially uh, all the problems that we're having with today, the, yeah, with today, the today. Yeah. So, No one has, you know, there's another one who that have that big conscience. That, yeah. But, well, that's a good story. Okay, we'll do one last question. Does that yes, sound good? Go okay, let's see. This person significantly influenced my life during these years. Well, it ties in with the other uh, the, the questions before. Yeah. That uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> I found my relatives, you know, uh, influenced me quite a bit. I remember, my older uh, brothers and sisters leave a big influence on you. You want to, uh, you know, you want to prove yourself. You want to prove yourself that you're good as them, and you want to match that and do better. Mm -hmm. And there's always that, you know, and that's good that we we're brought up that way, to uh, you know, to challenge ourselves to 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 be somebody. And uh, in in uh, and in a community where there's a, where there's a, you, you know you you see around you all the, the, uh, the mining was a big business all right mm -hmm. and you see the struggle that these people have and you you're making you know a, a conscious decision in your mind do you want to be like them or you want to be better right you know and that goes on and you see you see the community it's not hidden you know. In a small community, everybody knows everybody. And you and start making secrets. those decisions that, you know, I, I want to be better than that. I, I'm worth more than that. You, that, that goes, that's part of your feeling inside mm -hmm. of you that, you know, I have, I have more, more to give. I'm, a lot of times in life, there's someone that you look up to when you're younger, like, in, like you said, your siblings. Was there one particular sibling that you looked up to that you, wanted to strive to be or someone in the community that that you just looked at and said when I get older well my older. brother Joe spent a lot of time with us you know mm -hmm. and he was very patient with us and my aunt Hallett and Genevieve would you know we, we see how they're doing in school and how they're doing and, and you're measuring yourself by them too mm -hmm. you know we're from the same group right <laughs> so right. you say you know if they could do it oh I could do it too and maybe do better so you, you, that process goes on, and they they helped us quite a bit. Uh, we were a very very close family, uh, um, and mother and dad were, uh, you know, very good leaders. They they uh, they well they're example. When you see them working hard as they did and the struggle they had, you know, something's got to rub off. Mm -hmm. so, you know. so thank God for all of that. We were. Uh, we experienced that part of life and, and managed it and grew from it. You, I think you're good for one more question. Okay, let's see. One of my earliest memories about school was... Do you remember anything from kindergarten? Oh, did you do preschool or did you... What no, was your first year? No, there was no... Was no. kindergarten? Sixth grade. I mean, pardon me. First grade, six years old. Huh? Oh, they didn't do kindergarten. It's too much straight No, to no first. there's no kindergarten. Okay. You went right into... Do you remember your first day of school? Mm, no, I don't. No, I, I don't remember it. Do you remember anything about first grade? Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't. I don't remember that. Uh, what was your first grade? Do you remember I know, I know uh, we went to school. The, my older brothers and sisters took us to school. And we walked to school, see. Remember that there was no nobody drove nobody drove anything. <laughs> I wonder if your mom took you for your first day. You know I can't remember. You so. know now everyone gets nervous about the parents get nervous about the first day of kindergarten, yeah. the first day of preschool, and the kids but, cry. But see, we're at the, uh, we're uh, my all my brothers and sisters are older, right? So the two youngest, Paul and Pauline. I think it's become routine at this point. You knew it was safe, too, because yeah, you was, saw them in school. Right. You probably didn't so have the, the anxiety yeah. or... <laughs> yeah, the mold is broke. You so. probably went running. I couldn't wait to go. <laughs> Can't wait to go to class because yeah, that's because what you're... because they were already in school. Right. And we're watching them and doing their homework the <laughs> and uh, everything that goes on with school. We see this and right. we, we can't wait to be there. Yeah, there's no separation anxiety. I, I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember it at all. But I don't remember any pain either. Do you remember taking... What grade do you remember taking homework home? I wonder when that oh, all started. I, I, I don't remember that. Probably uh, more junior high. Yeah, they... Oh, no, I, I'm sure we had it in earlier years. Uh, I, uh, 
I had a book once, and I, I don't know where I, I lost it somehow. And it had the, I had a, a project about the life of Jesus and, and with pictures and, and story. And Uncle Johnny helped me with that very much. But I, I, I don't know, at one point I, in our travels, it got awfully mildewed and, uh, oh, sure. and bad. And so I think somehow it got discarded. Yeah, that would be But the, I, I remember that uh, project, uh, and I don't remember what grade, but uh, so if I was writing, it'd probably be in the fourth or fifth grade. What class did you have English, math? Did you have one teacher that taught several different subjects, or how no, was it broken out? Uh, the, uh, in those days, we had uh, one teacher did all of it. All right, and remember, we went to a bilingual school. So a lot of the subjects were uh, uh, both in English and uh, French. So our math would be in French. Wow, math is hard enough, but then yeah. <laughs> French. <laughs> so, so one teacher taught one you day. all of the all, subjects. All, that's right, yeah. That, that, that's Was there a certain it, subject that you liked better? Well, I, uh, I did, I, I enjoyed, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, math and uh, mm -hmm. uh, composition. So, the, I think being you know, an accounting think major, because, you probably loved math. <laughs> well, I think it's the, 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 the teacher that really, you know, you... You're right. You, that's what I think, you know. And, a uh, good teacher uh, really makes a difference in right. helping a child understand and learn. Spelling was uh, uh, difficult for me, uh, uh, English and French. Did you have spelling uh, bees where you had to stand up? And spell words in front of the class. No, I remember had, that in grade school. No, we had uh, we had just a uh, a sheet of paper, and uh, you had it, it would be tested, and they had to turn it in. Uh, and that was that was the grade on there. Yeah. So, uh, and that's the way they did it. It wasn't a uh, uh, it, it managed, you know, with one teacher doing mm -hmm. all of that. When did you you did you grow up? always speaking French and English, or did no, you learn French? No, remember, in... now, we, mother spoke Arabic. Right. And so we learned Arabic at home from, from when we grew up, and then mother also spoke French. So, so there was a, uh, and English was really the prevailing language. So by the time you went to first grade, you were oh, speaking oh, English, uh, English and French. No, no French, English and Arabic. We learned French in first grade. I see. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure that's out. That's right. Now. We learned it in school. Were most of the children like that, or did most? Oh, no, most of them are uh, French French. That must have been hard yeah. for you. Well, father uh, made a decision, uh, and if we're going to live in, you know, in that kind of uh, country, and that is in, uh, in the, uh, Canada, we should know, know both languages, French and English. So he says he'll go to a bilingual school. But then you came in with most of the children speaking French already, and you, you had learned, to learn it. You had to learn it. But that's the, probably the best way to learn it, being oh, forced and easy. submerged into the. That's true. Into it, there's no way you weren't yeah, going to learn we, it. Yeah, we to. could. Oh yeah, and our went to a, went to a French school, huh? went to French church. So you could see how much you got immersed into this uh, language, and it didn't take long before you learn it. And you probably. Spoke I didn't it. find it difficult at all, you know. Because you were so young. Thank you. <laughs> this is the best time they say to learn languages. That's why I want my kids to learn Spanish. But, yeah, yeah, I think it's important to learn a language, yeah. Then, you know, after all, after we entered uh, high school, we took Latin and then we got into it. Well, then you came to Phoenix and you probably didn't have to speak French that much. No. Did you ever keep it up that uh, much? No, I, I can't, no, not. You, you tend to lose it after mm -hmm. a while, yeah. In college, I took French, and uh, uh, so I can continue it. Uh, but that's that's about it, you know. You, you, when you no contact around you, you, right. you, you know. Now and then, I uh, I can. I know when I was with mom, uh, and I was in uh, Lebanon. I was. Uh, this is. I was. You know, we could speak French and uh, Arabic and English, and I had a little bit of Spanish background because of the people we work with and, mm -hmm. and I found myself sometimes a Spanish word will slip in. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> 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 
They say there's a lot of similarities there's between the yeah, languages, yeah. but... So, well, uh, I notice you're very much interested in this, Jennifer. You're, <laughs> you're engrossed in this <laughs> history. I, I hope you uh, learned uh, uh, a lot from it. It's, uh, it's amazing what, what you impart to your own uh, uh, children. Uh, your your uh, example of you and your husband is what they will be sitting down someday talking about, just as we are now. So I, it's very important that you give them your best example and your life, you know, what it is. And w even the struggle has, has a, a, a greater value than, uh, than trying to, uh, than to see the good times that we have had, uh, you know. There's no harm in that, but I find in, uh, in, uh, when, the, when there's struggle to a life, a lot of good things come out of it. I think the beauty of what's within a person starts to surface. So uh, I, I, I keep that in mind, you know, when you're raising your family. Uh, and that window is so small, as you will discover. Mm -hmm. You know, in the, before long, they're, they're in college and gone. Wow. So, and I mean, as we sit down and Mom and I talk, uh, you know, it, it happens that fast. So that uh, that hard uh, getting up, you know, taking care of Miles at night, <laughs> uh, you 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 forget about it after a while. You don't remember that anymore, and you, you just think of the of the beauty of the child at the time, of the, of, the, of who they are as they grow older, and what, and that's part of both of you. I will say he kept me up all last night, <laughs> but I will look beyond that. <laughs> well, you will forget that. That that part. You're right. I don't, that part goes away. You know, even you know, the, you know, the pain of birth goes away too, and the enjoyment of that child, what you brought into life, that's what survives. It is a miracle. It, it I is to you. think and to think that that a child. Amidst all of these pains it's having and growing, and you know, those are go away. They you don't remember that anymore. So, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy for uh, all of our children. They're uh, very good kids. Uh, we're happy with that, Mom and I. Well, I hope Dan and I could be a good example, like you've been for us. Yeah. yeah. Someday I'll be sitting here and Emily will be <laughs> doing the tape. <laughs> you know, they, they grow to that level at a certain point where they want to know. You know what, what, I want to know our background. You know, <clears throat> and they want to know that because of who they are today. Right. It's all part of it. All that evolves into each person. Well, it's funny because we don't sit here and ask you these questions every day, but no. we see each other every day. Absolutely, yeah. And now I'm 33 years old and I'm learning. Yeah. So it is interesting. I'm glad we're doing this. Thank you, Christina, for organizing yeah, Christina, this. Christina, thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate that. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Les. Okay. <laughs> we'll close with that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, hi Dad. How are you doing? I'm, I'm fine. Nick. I'm Nick. I am fifth from the top. I like to consider myself the oldest of the bottom. <laughs> Would you oh, say I was the oldest from the bottom? Oldest from the bottom. Okay. You're right. Excellent. Uh, okay, Christina gave me these questions, and we're just going to go over these questions fine. that she has. Um, first one here is my. Uh, let's see, teacher. What kind of student were you in in school? And uh, did you have a favorite teacher, or did you? Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, it, it, I thought I was uh, a good student. Uh, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm, we're in a French school, and our background is, uh, uh, you know, Lebanese and uh, Syrian background, and we we speak uh, Arabic at home, English to our friends, and then we're learning. Uh, we're learning French at school. So, you know, it's, uh, I had to try to make up all of those to make those all fit. So it takes a little more, more effort and uh, to do at that level. 
This was uh, in Sudbury? Yes, this is all basically. And this is between the, uh, what you uh, what grades? Well, but this is between, you know, uh, our birth and, uh, and uh, eighth grade. Uh, at the end of our eighth grade, uh, we left uh, Sudbury and came to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, excellent. <coughs> but high school is a whole different thing, right? High school was all in Phoenix. And uh, it seemed to most of these questions have been generated in my uh, <coughs> early years, uh, that is, the, uh, uh, the up to the eighth grade. Uh, and most of it is, for some reason, out of this book, it, uh, were generated in uh, uh, Sudbury. <coughs> okay, but, but in high school, uh, the question here is, what was a rite of passage that you remember? Was it uh, a specific instrument that you played, being part of the band? What, what is something that you really remember from high school that you'll carry with you all your life? Well, I enjoyed my uh, years at uh, St. Mary's High School. It was uh, very good, and, um, and that was my uh, leaving a small, uh, so to speak, a village in Sudbury to a bigger community in Phoenix and uh, a new uh, culture, new people, new surroundings, uh, big buildings, uh, bigger roads. Uh, so you, you put this all into the makeup now and, and, and a different climate. I, <laughs> I mean, I kept waiting when I was in Phoenix, I kept waiting for the snow to come down. <laughs> and Instead I, you know, the heat. Yeah, right, you know, you keep waiting for this. And, you know, because you've been accustomed to this up to that point, you know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and to learn uh, the Spanish instead of French. Now it's Spanish. So this is different. There's something new. People would walk up to us and talk to us in Spanish, thinking that we were Spanish too. Did you speak back to him in French? I couldn't speak <laughs> at all. I, I, I look at him and I no speak. <laughs> Did you eventually learn a little bit? Oh, eventually. We, okay. Yes. We, we learned enough <clears throat> to uh, manage. Right. Enough to get by. Um, next question. What is your strongest memory from college? Oh, from college? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, we jumped from grade school, high school, now to college. It mm. jumps right into it. Right into college. All right. Uh-huh. <clears throat> my first year at college, I went to uh, Regis. And uh, I mentioned this in a previous tape. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I enjoyed that very much. There was a uh, Jesuit priest there by the name of Father Jolin. I uh, took uh, Latin. Very good. We became uh, very good, uh, very good friends. And uh, he helped me an awful lot. Uh, this was my first year away from home. Mm. So you want to put this into the mix. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, emptiness of not having your family around and your mother and father. I, uh, I enjoyed uh, um, Regis College in Denver very much. I, uh, I, I, th I thought it was a, a good experience for my first year. Uh, I, we had uh, maybe one or two from St. Mary's go there. Uh, but I, and, my, and the reason I went there, I couldn't get into Santa Clara. And, and uh, my brother Joe was at Alma, a Jesuit brother at Alma College, and my sisters were in San Francisco. And I wanted to get into Santa Clara because that was close by to, right. uh, to both San Francisco and, uh, and uh, my brother Joe at Alma School in Las Gatas. So I, uh, after I finished my first year, my grades got up very good. I uh, made an application, got accepted. So then my sophomore year went to uh, Santa Clara and eventually graduated from Santa Clara. Uh, and over there I became a, a altar. I was an altar server also, by the way, in, uh, in uh, Regis and I also at Santa Clara. And uh, I can't remember the, the priest's name, the chaplain at uh, Santa Clara, but a very good, they were very good, uh, very good to me. Uh, I served there quite often, and uh, I, my, my experience being close to the, uh, the, these chaplains and the, uh, the community, the Jesuit community, was beautiful. A great experience for me to see the humbleness of these, these priests. Uh, and uh, the, uh, Father Kelly, who was an administration, um, uh, and uh, a very good man, just a great mm -hmm. guy. And eventually I became a 
prefect in one of the dining rooms. Oh, yeah. And I enjoyed that. I got my meals for nothing and was a prefect oh, yeah. in the dining room. And that's when I first experienced a uh, earthquake. Oh, wow. When I was, they had these big murals on the wall framed. And I would see these frames moving and the chandeliers moving. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. That was my first experience right there at uh, Santa Clara. Although eventually, again, I had another experience driving to San Francisco when I thought I had a flat tire. Then it was the earthquake. Oh, wow. And I see all these people, and then I suddenly realized that is an earthquake. Scary experience. Yeah, it is. Well, you touched on something before, um, which kind of leads into the next question. Um, it seemed like, um, I, I'm assessing that you're, uh, when you moved away from home and you went to Regis and then to Santa Clara, you found like a family atmosphere among the religious uh, uh, brothers there and brethren. So were they, I have a couple questions here, were they uh, sort of like a, uh, an addition to the family? You felt like they were your uh, family members? And then also, what was you know, the role of religion in your life at that time? Did you go to church as often then? And did your spiritual life really build and grow from college to where you were today? Uh, I went to... Uh, uh you know, for sure, every Sunday I went to a Mass there. But often during the week I would go two, three times, maybe every day, you know. I, it, uh, I stayed uh, on campus and it was nothing just to roll down and get there. And being an altar server gets you, you know, encouraged to, to be there at church. Uh, and then, you know, and then you, you befriend all of these, uh, uh, the, the crowd that there is a, a, a group of uh, uh, guys that were, this was an all boys school at that mm -hmm. time, both Regis and uh, Santa Clara. You get to see these friends that are, you know, that enjoy going to church and that have a good, strong spiritual base. So you make, you make good friends with them and, uh, and that becomes your, your clique. And uh, we, had, we had a great time. We, we did a lot of, uh, uh, community service, not as much as they do today. Mm -hmm. But at that time, that was great just to use the word community service or to help the poor. Mm. We got involved in that. Uh, then the, uh, I, I think that's generally what, how, well, how I got my, uh, the strength and my uh, spiritual uh, guidance. Was it encouraged by your mother or your father growing up? I mean, me and my uh, uh, strength and uh, religion. Yes. I, I think from both. You know, uh, you know, you see the struggle that they have and the hardships that they uh, grew under, and uh, and their faith, uh, strong faith. You know, that it's going to be good. They had a lot of hope. They knew, you know, to do right, it'll succeed. Mm. They saw beyond the, the, the problems of the day, the problems that incur from uh, the war, from the, you know, we were deprived of a lot of stuff. But now remember, when we left Sudbury and came to the United States, the war had already ended. So there was a, there was a buildup there of more material goods and availability of a lot of things. But we never went to excess on you know, any of that. We were, we, I think we live very moderately. Well, um, the next question, I think, is one that Christina circled here. She wanted to know, or at least in the book, it wants to know, what kind of animals have you taken care of? <laughs> and did you have any pets growing up? Or did you, you know, what, did you have any, uh, I guess, you know, in the family what, before we were born? Oh, yeah, we had, and uh, uh, yes, I'll tell you. I, we had a canary when we were <laughs> in grade school. We had maybe two canaries and that. Uh, no, well, yeah, we have a stray cat now and then, but yeah. uh, not, not for very long. Um, you know, the climate was terrible, the poor animals that, would, that, that weren't inside. They couldn't survive outside that climate in the winter oh, months. Yeah. Uh, when we got to Arizona uh, in uh, our high school years, n no, uh, really no animals uh, to speak of. Uh, uh, when we had the, the Shannon Court, we had a couple dogs uh, in a dog house, mm -hmm. and uh, 
that and became friends to uh, all the tenants too. <laughs> they would all feed sure. the dog. Uh, that's about the limit that I could think of. Then, and uh, then after we got married, we had, uh, uh, I think it was Peter brought Snarf over or something. That was the first animal that you had? Oh, well, no, remember, first animal at that level. I remember after marriage. So mom never introduced any no. animals into the house? No, were no, 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 none at all. Okay. No, I think Snarf was the first. In Almeria, we didn't have No, any. we had cats before Snarf. Oh, remember oh, Bissy and Meadow, all those? At Meadowbrook. Yes. Meadowbrook, yeah. That's right. Christina remembers But not, not in the house. There were... No, no, only outside. Am I right? Yeah, only outside. Only outside, right. Yeah. Then Snarf was outside. I remember. We had was cats. the Vanderway's dog, right? No, I think the Snarf, Snarf was Vanderway. Was the offspring of Vanderway's dog. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, I did know that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mandy, I think, was the name of their dog. Yeah, and then we had uh, yeah. Snarf. He was yeah. good. He was a good dog until he <laughs> ran away forever. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. That's right. Well, let me move on to the next question. Um, and this is an interesting question. Um, what, what things do you really remember about your mother's her work and responsibilities around the house, like her dedication. I think today is a very different society. You know, do you see that your that your mother was um, you know, passionate about bringing the children up, staying home, um, or you know, how would you say she was? Give me a reflection. Uh, <clears throat> well, in light of uh, you know the struggle of feeding and clothing and all that. Mm -hmm. Mother had great talents. She was a seamstress. She oh. sew, could sew anything really? and crochet, very good. And an excellent cook. So you put those two things together right. in a struggling economy and the depressed times, you can make things happen. Saves you follow? Well, you, there was no money. Yeah. There was, it's not a question of saving, you just didn't have it. So she could do preserves, mm -hmm. you know, and do all of the things that it took to uh, feed and clothe a family. Right. You know, buy, uh, buy the raw material, buy the raw products, and just, uh, I couldn't believe how uh, we got along. Remember now, I got all the hand-me-downs, and Pauline and myself got all the hand-me-downs. And Dad uh, did yeah. the haircuts. He did give us our haircuts. So, you know, those are the things that y you just have to do. I don't know if this question's been asked before and it's not in here, but I always wondered, did your mother miss her family? Oh, very much, uh, uh, Nick. You, you just, uh, uh, yes. She, um, one time she got news that, uh, I can't remember if it was her mother or father passed away. And, uh, For the first time we saw my mother cry. Yeah. Shows that she's human. And we were little kids and we all cried with her. Yeah. And they were in Syria and she was here. Yeah, that's right. And she had no one else here? Well, she had a, a brother in Detroit and a sister in, uh, I think, Akron, Ohio, or somewhere in Ohio. Um, weren't really close, uh, you know, by mail and things like that, but not, and, but uh, she missed her mother and father. Now your father the same way? Do you think that he also misses uh, brothers in Ontario moving so far away from everyone? And well, coming here? Uh, now remember, my mother, uh, this, this experience of losing uh, a member of her uh, mother or father, we were in Canada at the time. So, oh, yeah. And uh, in Canada, my father had his mother until she passed away. His father died earlier, a long, long time ago. Uh, in, uh, we understand, in Chicago from uh, uh, food poisoning. But uh, my father had only the two brothers and his mother. That's it, out here. Mm -hmm. But they had relatives, you know, first cousins to him yeah. that, were, that lived in the, in the same community. Did you ever meet your grandfather? No, never. On your mother or father's no, neither side? Neither side. You're now your grandmother? Oh, my only thing was my father's mother. That's all we had. And she lived in the same community in Sudbury. And did she live in the same house as you? 
Originally, she did. She stayed upstairs in our house. The only memory I have of her is when she stayed in this apartment uh, in, uh, uh, that I mentioned to uh, Jennifer over in uh, mm -hmm. Uncle Charlie's, uh, next to his hotel. Do you remember her name? Oh yeah, Mulaney. You knew her very well. We, we, helped, uh, we helped take care of her. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question, unless you want to talk more about that. I'm going to try to see if I can find a good one here for you. Um, well, what's, um, what were your, uh, when you were younger, when you were growing up, um, what were some of your passions that were close to your heart? And we've talked about religion. I'm sure you've talked a lot about that. Um, we talked a little bit about music. Um, you know, I think you've probably talked about being in the band and, and whatnot in high school. Is that right? Right. Did you have any other passions besides that? Um, a hobby or something? You know, I have hobbies. Christina has hobbies. We all have hobbies. But I really don't know what your hobby was growing up besides, you know, helping the church. Yes. Um... Well, that's, uh, uh, I, you know, I loved ice skating. Okay. I love ice skating. That was, uh, uh, and I, I enjoyed that very much. I, in fact, I was, I thought I was good at it. And uh, I tried to play hockey, uh, but we didn't have enough, enough to get people together. But we practiced with hockey. Uh, then uh, in the, uh, uh, tried skiing, okay. Uh, tobogganing was fun. Mm -hmm. Those were great uh, winter sports that we that we did. Yeah. Uh, then uh, in the summer uh, we played uh, baseball. Uh, remember once a guy let his bat go and hit me right in the eye, and my mother got. I remember put the, those <laughs> days they put something on the eye like a piece of meat, and uh -huh. somehow it supposed to make the swelling go down. And but uh, I survived it. Good. I'm going to ask you one last question. She's saying we have five minutes, and this looks like it's a really good question. All right. And I'm going to end on that one. Well, it, just enough to give us just the end here. Um, it's a really good question. This question is about politics. Um, and this question really deals with, you know, your parents' politics and your politics. Because a lot of people say religion, you know, melds with politics. Some people might not agree with that. Um, but, you know, living in the 1930s and 40s, you know, and by the time you reached 18, I'm sure there were people up there <clears> on the ballot that you had to worry about, am I going to go to war if I vote for this guy? Am I not going to go to war? You know, the, the, the legal age to vote, I think, at that time was, was it 18 or 21? Uh, I think uh, 21. 21. Um, so, you know, all these questions are important, like you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and, and then Harry Truman and these people that were voted into office when you were growing up. What were your politics back then? Well, you know, it, as a youth, you don't don't get really involved in it that much. Sure. But when you get into the high school and college level, it starts to uh, grow on you. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I I find it uh, two things. You know, I I I, I did uh, you know I went in college years. I was two years into the um, uh, Korean War, and. Uh, you, you you start getting uh, you start realizing the value of of uh, uh, politics and uh, voting. I, and I remember as soon as I was able to vote, I got out there and voted. Remember who you uh, voted for? Well, I, I remember voting for Eisenhower and uh, and for Kennedy and uh, uh, those. And, and I was uh, pretty active uh, going to see uh, uh, Goldwater and give his talks. And uh, then uh, you went to his speeches. Oh yeah, here in town. Sure. And then uh, when Kennedy came out, went to hear him talk, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and his uh, uh, any of the bigger politicians, I went. And I remember once going to a celebration of, and I can't remember who it was that uh, was in. Uh, went to the hotel, celebrated with everybody their victory. Uh, and I was. And I, I got to say, I, I try to follow it as close as I can. And uh, because I, I belong to the Catholic Alumni Club, and a lot of the guys there were very enthused about politics. Mm -hmm. And they did a lot of reading, and uh, I, uh, 
had a lot of discussions with them uh, about uh, uh, about politics and the value of it. So, and then keep in mind, and when I got into high school and after college, I started to spend more time on uh, social works, on going out to uh, different communities and helping them out, you know, from Guadalupe, Surprise, El Mirage, uh, and parts of Glendale. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we so the social justice. Yeah, the social justice. And, and a lot of the people that we were affiliated with mm -hmm. were living in these communities because they went to live there yeah. to help the community out. Right. So it gave us, uh, you know, uh, a connection. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we came very close with many of them. And some of them, in fact, most of them, I think, eventually got into some social program to help out. Yeah, it's very interesting how that evolved. Uh, so that uh, that's a good uh, that, that's a good source, and it's uh, and it's, and I think it's great. It helps you out. Last one, second question: Who do you think is going to win this year's election? I think McCain is. You do? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think McCain is going to win. <laughs> do your mom because always vote in the same person? Not necessarily. You don't ask her? No, but we do. We talk about. It. I don't want to neutralize my vote, or I don't want to neutralize her vote. <laughs> so we try to get our heads together before we vote. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Thank you, Dad. I appreciate well, thank it. You. And, thank uh, you, Nick. Appreciate the time. And uh, I hope to be viewing this in many years. I, know, I hope so. I hope your your children's children will, be, will see this too. First time you went, Dad. <laughs> <laughs>